welcome to the SVG TV News for Wednesday, April 8th. I am Khalil Cato with the details. Laws to discourage irresponsible behavior associated with, a communicable, with communicable diseases, along with additional powers to medical officers under the circumstances, were noted by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez in Parliament yesterday as he discussed amendments made to the Public Health Act of 1977. Over the last few weeks, there, have, there has been concern over the alleged behavior of some persons who should be in quarantine but have not been complying with the orders. Under the original Public Health Act, any person while suffering a communicable disease who intentionally exposes him or herself without proper precautions against spreading the disease in any public place was liable to a fine of not exceeding $100 or a term of imprisonment not exceeding three months. Speaking in Parliament last evening, PM Gonzales explained how the new provisions or amendments strengthen the law and discourage persons. That should be discourages irresponsible behavior. Before us, this amendment, as the Honorable Minister pointed out, there's a raft of provisions which such behavior could be captured under and which would be punished Under Clause 27Y, $2,000 or six months. And for every day you commit the offense, it's a new offense. So you, if you commit the offense on a Friday, you could be charged. You do it on a Saturday, you could be charged. In the new, on a Sunday, you could be charged. Of course, it's up to the magistrate to decide when he's liable. He's going to charge you the full $2,000 on every occasion and whatever punishment, imprisonment. So it's straight away. This amendment before us would say to people, you cannot do foolishness and get out of it as easy as anyone. Health officers under the new provisions were given additional powers and PM Gonzales highlighted what a health officer can now do under the law. The power to ensure compliance. Where a health officer has grounds under 27H1 to issue an order under section 27A and has reasonable and probable grounds to believe that the person to whom the order is or would be directed under section 27C to A has refused to or is not complying with the order. B, is not likely to comply with the order promptly. C, cannot be readily identified or located as a result. The order would not be carried out promptly. Or D, has requested the assistance of the health officer in eliminating or decreasing the risk to health presented by the communicable disease. The health officer may take whatever action the health officer considers necessary including providing authority for such persons, materials, and equipment to enter upon any premises and to use such force as the health officer considers necessary to carry out the terms of the order. And the chief medical officer may order a person who fails to comply to pay the cost of taking that action. And the court may ensure compliance on the 27I. Very powerful section. The new provisions cover the body of a person who dies from a communicable, a communicable disease. PM Gonzales further explained what the provisions allow for in such a situation. Then there's death from a communicable disease. I want to read it, 27.2. In the case of a death of a person from a communicable disease, access to, that, to the body of that person and the care, handling, and transport of the body of that person shall be carried out in the manner directed by the health officer unless otherwise provided for in the rules. Disinternment, 27X1. No person shall disinter or remove the, body, the buried body of a person who died from a communicable disease except at the instance of the attorney general acting on the advice of the chief medical officer or with the written permission of the health officer for the place in which the body is buried. And of course, it provides for the rules. Meanwhile, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday says despite some concerns, 
he supports the amendments made to the country's Public Health Act of 1977. Dr. Friday said, given the circumstances, the opposition fully supports the measures to protect the public, the health of the public at this time. Circumstances have to be considered, Mr. Speaker, so long as they are balanced with protecting public health and individual rights. I have read the legislation, Mr. Speaker. I've seen, yes, there's authority to detain and to apprehend, but those persons as well, they have a right to an attorney to represent them if they, are, if they feel that their rights are improperly violated. Mr. Speaker, we are in extraordinary times and given the urgency of the situation, the conditions on the ground with respect to persons violating quarantine and putting everybody and a large segments of our population at risk. I believe, Mr. Speaker, that we on this side of the House will support the measure that helps to protect or to give greater protection to the general public in this time of the COVID-19 crisis. As the Prime Minister continued to highlight the amendments made to the Public Health Act, he stated that a public health emergency is quite different from that of a state of emergency. In his presentation, PM Gonzalez explained what constitutes a public health emergency. Minister of Health was quite correct to address the question of public health emergency. A public health emergency means an extraordinary event which is determined to constitute a public health risk in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and which potentially requires a coordinated response in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is a new and clear position and it deals with the declaration of an emergency. This is not declaration of a state of emergency when you lose your fundamental rights and freedoms. This is not a declaration of a state of emergency when, you, when your fundamental rights are suspended and so to the right to habeas corpus. Different emergency. This is an emergency, a, a public health emergency under this amendment. The Prime Minister also highlighted some of the powers provided to the Minister of Health under the Act. Where the Minister has declared a public health emergency, the Minister, on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, may implement special measures to mitigate or remedy the emergency. And it's important, the, the Minister, having dealt with many situations in detail, gave one or two examples here, but I think it's important for us to spell out what special measures to mitigate or remedy the emergency, the public health emergency. The first one which he mentioned, immunization program. B, preparing a list of individual or individuals or classes of individuals to be given priority for active and passive immunizing agents, drugs, medical supplies, or equipment. You can't say you have it somewhere and you're holding it for yourself. No. Uh, the, amendments to the, the amendments to the Public Health Act 1977 cover the closing of schools, and PM Gonzales pointed out what the law says in this area. C. Ordering the closing of any, any educational setting or place of assembly. So it is not just the Minister of Education coming to Cabinet and the Cabinet saying close the schools. If there's a public emergency, that could, or a public health emergency, that could be done. Again, I want to remind everybody who report in this, a public health emergency is a different thing than a declaration of a state of emergency under the Emergency Powers Act, referencing the Constitution of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Section 17. Mindful of the time, Prohibiting 
and limiting access to certain areas of the country or evacuating persons from an area of St. Vincent and the Grandines. And as for schools, they will remain closed across SVG for another two weeks until a review of the current COVID-19 situation is conducted. After going on an early Easter break, one week ahead of schedule, teachers and students were expected to return to the classrooms on April 14th. However, in Parliament yesterday, Minister of Education, National Reconciliation and Information, Sinclair Jimmy Prince, said they are carefully monitoring the situation before making a determination on the reopening of schools. No one can accurately predict what the days ahead will look like. And given the fluid nature of all things associated with this virus, at this stage, the situation in St. Vincent and the Grandines and the rest of the world continues to evolve. In consultation with various stakeholders, including Teachers Union, the Ministry of Health officials, the principals' associations, and other entities, it was mutually agreed that the reopening of school on the scheduled date of Tuesday, 14th of April 2020, would not be in the best interest of our country in the midst of this global pandemic at this time. We must note that circumstances have changed in our local context, where the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 has increased. And this was not the situation prior to the closure of schools. So the situation has not changed for the better. Uh, we are managing it very well, of course. Uh, Minister Prince says that the Ministry of Education will continue to be guided by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment as it relates to COVID-19 in SVG. He said in the meantime, various teaching modalities are being explored, such as virtual teaching and other online platforms. YouTube, Zoom, Google Classrooms, Microsoft Teams, Notes Masters, television and radio. Of course, we have been meeting with the providers, Digicel and Flu, in order to partner with them to get these platforms up and running. And I'm pleased to say that access to these platforms through Flu and Digicel will be free to the students. To begin the preparations, Mr. Speaker, a gap analysis survey was issued to principals of both the primary and secondary schools for completion using Google Docs and designed to upload immediately once completed. Of course, we have to find out where the gaps are in the, in the students in the curriculum, and then we try to plug those gaps. Education officers were then deployed to round up teachers who are willing to lead in the presentation of lessons, tutorials to students. Approximately $5.5 million has been allocated to the Ministry of Education in the Supplementary and Appropriation Bill, which was passed in Parliament last evening. Minister Prince said that some of this money will help to deal specifically with the sanitization of schools across SVG. That janitors regularly sanitize all classrooms, and we have already ordered a quantity of cleaning agents which are being distributed to schools at the moment. Liquid soap, wall, dispen wall dispenser, bathroom. Also in Parliament yesterday, Minister of Finance Camilo Gonzalez announced that government will be purchasing tablets for students to be used for online teaching. In light of the withdrawal of service by members of the Vincentian Transportation Association, Vintas, over the fear of COVID-19, the government stepped in to provide transportation services to healthcare workers into capital Kingstown today. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is working along with the Ministry of Health to provide the transportation service from three main points, namely Chateaubelair, Oia, and Mesopotamia. The head of the Vincentian Transport Association said their members decided to withdraw their services for an initial period of two weeks starting today due to concerns for health and safety during this period of COVID-19. Meanwhile, in Parliament yesterday, Minister of Transport Julian Francis made an appeal to Vintas and all omnibus operators to rethink their decision and to let good sense prevail. Ask them to reconsider their position on this matter. Um, the Ministry of Health has issued guidelines and an advisory for the Easter weekend asking the minibuses not to take trips and carry persons into frolic and even church events that are going to be large. And I want them to consider those four days that the Ministry of Health has asked them to observe and to reconsider the matter of their closure 
for 14 days. Because persons have to get to work, the persons on the front line, the nurses, the doctors, and frontline workers, policemen, policewomen. So in this appeal to them, I am asking them, please, to reconsider the matter of the 14 days. There were a few omnibuses seen transporting passengers today, and our news team caught up with some of the operators who said they were not members of Vintas and that staying at home will not help them pay their bills. Though their work is considered high risk to contract COVID-19, the omnibus operators empathized with the stranded passengers. Well, we normally study the people in the village, you know, to solve them. And about the association, because if the van go down, the association ain't going to buy back your van. Whatever the van was, the association don't buy. And we serve any people in the village, and we want to continue to serve them. Okay. Well, first, I, I, I'm not in the association, right? And two, um, although um, government talk about subsidizing, um, was it $250 a month? That, that's just can't cut it. It can't work with me because I, I have insurance, I have a lot of a lot of bills to meet so and then most importantly I, I have customers that I service and money. that's no money that's why we gotta work and carry three and four on a seat we can't deal with the nine passengers so I walk in and carry an extra if you wanna go you go if you don't wanna go you catch an next van and the van don't wanna walk so you ain't got no choice you know what I'm saying 250 is no money Conductor walking for 70 and 80, driver 90 and 100. 250 a month, never can buy a tire. 450 for a brand new hanko. So you have to walk. I don't think this, the association, association does do um, much for the drivers and owner for minibus. Hi. Most of them are for themselves. I mean, the executive are for themselves. Whatever the government gives them, they take it. That's foolishness. Because if the government is saying one thing, mm -hmm. it's like they're putting the government to shut down the country. That's how I see it. Okay. And the government is don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. well, the thing is, the two-week two -week shutdown would be a great challenge on the working public. Mm -hmm. You understand? Especially those traveling who don't have their own private transport. A single passenger will sit down and a row. I believe they're supposed to pay the whole fee for one seat, right? Because everybody talking, other thing is different. They don't have the gas price, they don't have the diesel price, right? I don't have no problem as a conductor, right? Because everybody had to eat. While some passengers expressed disappointment with the actions taken and promised not to travel again with the omnibuses with which drew their services, there were others who gave Vintas members their full support. It me very bad because I have to walk from walk to home and walk back from home to work and I'm walking into town and walking going back home. Right now. Where do you live in? Um, Peter, um, Peverly. Okay. Yeah, and I'm saying, in my opinion, when things come back to normal and the vans them come back in the area, I'm going to specialize vans to travel with. Those that run when it was in the crisis, I will, I will go to them. Those that refuse to run, I will not be taking them. To go back to Sato? Yeah, I got to go back to Sato. How many vans in Sato? Well, there is only one van I see called this morning. It's that one. Okay. So all the rest in Sato. Mm -hmm. So you agree with the vans pulling off the road? Uh, no, I ain't going. I ain't going there. Mm -hmm. I ain't going there. Why? I ain't going there at all. <laughs> no. Um, we gotta make it the money. Uh huh. Make it the money. And still, still crossing till see that they may make it enough money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, so that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, the van situation telling you I'm very, very, very scared. But we are a poor people. The days when money used to flow, everything tied up. That is why you see few vans still running to survive. And they're surviving at a risk with this thing because you don't know who is who. Mm -hmm. You understand? Right. So this government need to put something in a proper place. It need to get some, get some, a vehicle or something going about. From what our news team observed on the road today, in the outskirts and in capital Kingstown, a lot of the omnibuses are not complying with the regulations for two passengers per seat. Some of the omnibuses, omnibus operators also expressed disappointment with the stipend offered by government, which is between $250 and $300 for three months. 
Governor General, Her Excellency Dame Susan Duggan, is calling on all Vincentians and non-nationals to be responsible in the face of the coronavirus pandemic. Her encouragement comes in an address to the nation today as persons here at home and globally grapple with the impacts of the virus. Her Excellency said Vincentians are a resilient people and called on all to embrace the spirit of love, understanding and cooperation. It's not a time to be defiant and to be irresponsible as this could put the entire nation at risk. Nor is this a time to allow political divisions to blind us as to who or what is the enemy. The enemy is COVID-19 and division can only get in the way of our victory over it. What is necessary is our resolve to work together with a common sense of purpose, that being to succeed in overcoming this crisis. Maybe this is a most appropriate time for us to come to the realization that there are forces outside our control capable of wreaking havoc on humankind. And unless we embrace a spirit of love, understanding, and cooperation, we will be fighting a losing battle against these forces. I have every confidence that the lessons learned from this crisis will be used to forge new pathways to a better society. Her Excellency took the opportunity to thank the nation's healthcare providers and security forces for their commitment in keeping the nation safe. I wish to urge all of us to show our appreciation for the work already done and yet to be done by our hard-working healthcare providers who are literally putting their lives on the line to take care of us. Let us keep them in our praise and do whatever we can to support them. The members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force must not be forgotten, as they too are on the front line, maintaining law and order during this difficult time. We must not make their job more difficult than it usually is by being non-compliant. The Governor General laments that it is the first time in many years that Christians are not able to conduct activities in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our thoughts are also with the many Vincentians in the diaspora who may be even more exposed to COVID-19 than we are here. Let us hope that they stay safe. Finally, we are in the season of Easter a special time for Christians throughout the world. For the first time in many years, we are unable to celebrate Easter by attending services and vigils. However, we are comforted by what Easter means to us, a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead. Hope defeats fear. May God bless us all. As the world continues to grapple with the impacts of coronavirus, some local churches have been using technology to conduct their services, facilitating physical distancing. This week is known as Holy Week, which is the time when Christians commem commemorate the death of Jesus Christ, and churches have been streaming or recording their services to reach members, either through social media, television, radio, or other platforms. Among the churches using technology to reach out to members is the Rillen Hill Church of the Nazarene. The church's pastor, Fidel Taylor, said the church will be closed on Sunday and the service recorded to be broadcast using one or two of the platforms. Doing a service, but the service will be recorded in the church by just um, the musicians, the worship leaders, and myself. And it will be broadcast later on in the day. Our, our members are aware of it. We have a, a WhatsApp chat group, and um, it's a small congregation, so it's very easy to communicate to them. And like I said, they are aware of it. And they do follow the, the, the services um, via um, social media. But we also want to get the message out to persons who may, who may are not members but want to attend the service to ensure that they are aware that the church will be closed this Sunday.
But of course, it is very important that we continue the work of our Lord Jesus Christ by spreading the gospel. And, and that is why we are recording it, and which will be aired um, during the course of the day on Sunday. Pastor Taylor said despite the limitations, Christians can still celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is very important for us as Christians to remember the significance of this weekend. This weekend, as Christians across the world, we should celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even though we cannot, you know, have church as usual, we can as Christians, wherever we are, in our homes and in our small gatherings, we can celebrate the death, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ because this is what the Christian faith is all about. If Jesus had not died, and if he, if, he, if he wasn't especially resurrected, there will be no Christianity. And we want to celebrate that. Sunday, to me, to us, is Resurrection Sunday. And it signifies a lot. It signifies the, 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 the forgiveness of sins. It, it signifies the new life that we have found in Jesus Christ. The hope of glory. And I'm calling on all Christians not to be daunted, but to celebrate him because in all that is taking place god is still in control and he will bring us safely through 